Hello, I'm Cody Short. I'm an astrodynamic software engineer and product lead for SDK Astrogator. I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about um, some Astrogator updates that are coming for SDK 11.7. So first we're going to start with just a laundry list of some incremental advancements. I'm just going to read through this. Um, these things are kind of in addition to some of the bigger things that we've done, which we'll get into in a minute, but um, just a, a few things that are, I think, going to make life easier for folks um, or add a little bit more capability to some existing tools. For example, we've added modified equinoctial elements as an option for the optimal finite maneuver. That lets folks pose problems a little bit differently. Um, we've added Earth-centered fixed Cartesian coordinates to be so you can specify your launch burnout conditions in those coordinates. Simple number of revolution calculations object, calculation object, kind of to simplify a thing that you might have to build a few calculation objects to kind of put them together to make this. So just a, a quality of life improvement. We've also added direct user interface in our user interface uh, to access SNOP's internal scaling options for the search profiles and for the optimal finite maneuver. Some improvements to the API for the delta v vector uh, for impulsive maneuvers in the object model API. For situations where you might have a stopping condition on a propagate segment or a maneuver that's already been uh, previously surpassed, say for example an epic stopping condition, and maybe you don't want to start propagation uh, if that's already happened, so just a simple thing there. So. Those sorts of things, um, and then a few bigger things. So one of the one of the larger improvements that we've made uh, is to add an in-plate solar radiation pressure model directly into Astrogator. Um, previously, you were able to do this with a plugin, um, but folks always have problems uh, getting the plugins to work or getting them registered and whatnot. So we thought it would be we'd make it easier for people to be able to do this. So basically, you have a file-driven model where you can specify different. Um, plates for your for, for your in-plate model. Those plates could be sun pointing plates, say for your solar panels, or uh, constrained sun pointing plates. Maybe you have a physical constraint on the spacecraft so you can't actually point towards the sun all the time, but you maybe want to try and do your best. Um, or plates that are fixed in the body frame, uh, just generally, so you can better represent what your spacecraft is for that solar radiation pressure. This has been added to, again, simplify workflows for people and also to help maintain parity with our orbit determination toolkit, which also brought this model in uh, and will be available in an upcoming release for ODTK. Another cool thing that we're excited about is the throttle table engine model. This is a model then that lets you provide a file, so like the one that you can see here on the screen, where you can specify things like for a given throttle level what your power is, what your ISP is, and what your thrust level would be. And then from that, so you have different operating modes for your engine, you're able to uh, pick how you might want to interpolate that data or if you want to use it at discrete uh, discrete power levels. So you have options of using a continuous uh, model with a regression polynomial fit of order that you specify or a piecewise linear fit or just operate at discrete levels. Um, so that's pretty cool. We're excited about that. Folks have been asking for that for a while. So. Another cool thing that's coming is uh, a native implementation of the circular restricted th three-body problem. And I'm actually going to go into that in greater detail in another video. But um, this basically covers a lot of the new things that are coming in SDK 11.7 for Astrogator. So thanks for listening.